YouTube friends. This is Roxy, Firewife Lawyer Mom. Guess what? Today, fourth grade. Let's do it. Don't you miss it? No, cause nothing good is ever come easy. And we've come too far to give up now. We've never been so close. Welcome to my channel. This is the Firewife Lawyer Mom here. My name is Roxy and I love doing these amazing videos for you guys. And I have started my channel back almost over a year ago, I think. I have been just documenting my homeschool year journey. It's going to be my second homeschool year that's coming up. I'm so excited about it. I can't believe that I actually survived my first homeschool year. But I gotta tell you that it has been such a blessing to me and to my family. And I hope that these videos have also blessed you guys. Then thank you for, for those who have subscribed to my channel. If these videos bless you, please make sure to um, hit the subscribe button below. Hit the notification bell so that you're notified when there's new videos. And join me as I continue on in my journey of homeschooling. I love it. I think it's awesome. And today I have fourth grade curriculum for you all to look at. We're going to have flip throughs. We're going to go through um, everything about the curriculum, why I chose it, all that kind of stuff. So stay tuned because it's going to be a great video. Now, before I get to the actual meat of this video, I want to give you guys a little overview about fourth grade and what I am expecting for fourth grade. So my daughter is just so you guys get an idea, a very independent learner. She can pretty much hit the ground running doing whatever it is that I ask her to do. You know, she does get stuck sometimes and does need some extra help. But for the most part, I'm able to give her a workbook, give her a reading activity, something to do. And she just goes with it, does it, and, and it, it, school comes pretty easy to her. So she is not so, like, she's pretty advanced, but, you know, not not too, too much. You know, we still need to go over things and, and stuff like that. And she does need practice and stuff like that, too. So she is an independent learner. And when I was thinking about curriculum, as I do with all of the times that I'm going to choose curriculum, I always think about what worked and what didn't work last year. And I like to do that because... I I want to make sure that I'm always tailoring my curriculum to my child's needs and to their learning style. And so I love to kind of have a little bit of a reflection before I get into the fun part, which is the shopping and getting all of the stuff and smelling all the new books that come in. Um, I like to really do a reflection and say, okay, what worked? What didn't work? What felt like she really didn't get much out of it and stuff like that. So I'm going to share that with you guys as I go through each of the curriculum choices that I have. So I definitely recommend that before you choose curriculum, whether you've been homeschooling for eight years or you've it's just your first year, make sure that you are really tuned in, tuned in to your child's learning style. The next thing is, is just to kind of give you guys an overview of how I divide my homeschool. My homeschool is divided into four different sections. It's divided into each of my children's core subjects, the, the family subjects, which are the subjects that we teach in a group. And the last thing is circle time slash morning time. And circle time, morning time, I really love. It's an hour every day, except for Fridays. So Monday through Thursday, it's one hour where I get to loop in a lot of subjects that I can't have, to, I don't have time to teach during the day. So we teach them on a loop schedule. So I am going to show you guys that the family subjects and the the uh, morning morning time subjects in a separate video because I don't want to make this too long. So what I do in order to look for curriculum, I always review three resources. I review home learning year by year. I also review the Well Trained Mind by Susan Wise Bauer, and then I look at my children's. Uh, state standards. And so I always look up the state standards because I want to make sure that I am teaching along with all of the other kids that live in our state. I live in the state of Florida. They have um, teachers pay teachers. Some amazing women who have placed the standards into a beautiful Excel spreadsheet, which I pay for. It's about a dollar or so, dollar and change. And I pay for it because I want to have a really nice way to see all of the standards that I need to teach that year. So I review all of those things prior to picking up my curriculum choices because I wanna make sure that I'm choosing the right things that need to be taught that year. 
So that's going to be going along with those standards. But I have found that in the United States, for the most part, state by state, for the most part, now each state has their own thing, they pretty much teach around the same things around the same times. So it's pretty standardized, especially with Common Core that came out and now, you know, the other things that have come out after that. It's trying to kind of get everything to be a little bit more standardized so that children are kind of learning the same thing wherever they go. So that you can keep in mind, but each state does have their individual thing. So I do recommend that you look at your state standards. Most of them are on the Department of Education website for your state. Also, you can check out HLSDA. Um, that is a great website for you to be able to also get assistance with, you know, making sure that you're meeting all of your children's standards in education. So my fourth grade curriculum will be divided into morning worksheets. So I always give them a little kind of a little warm up brain, you know, warm up the brain kind of worksheet. Then I give them some kind of a copy work, some kind of a, you know, something where they are able to do some writing in the morning. The next thing I pick, the next part of my of, of my fourth grade curriculum is logic and critical thinking. I think logic and critical thinking are hugely important for children to develop that. The next thing is handwriting and creative writing. So those kinds of things go hand in hand. Math, language arts, which includes all of my, all of the phonics and the grammar and the spelling and vocabulary and all of those kinds of things. Reading, which for me, my child is a very, very fluent reader. So my reading curriculum is books and books and more books. That is my reading curriculum for fourth grade. Just read, 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 because the more you read, the better you get at it. And the last thing that I'm going to be doing in my fourth grade curriculum is social studies. Now, the reason why I'm going to be splitting, normally social studies for me is a family subject, but the reason why I'm splitting it this year is because in fourth grade in the state of Florida, they actually study Florida social studies. So they study the history of the state of Florida, which I think is super fun and very exciting because I love learning about my own state, about the history about it, about how the economy in Florida works, all those kinds of things. And so we're really excited because we're going to be kind of going through that this year. And I'm hoping that by the end of the year, we can take a trip to St. Augustine, where everything kind of started here in Florida and St. Augustine. It's the oldest city in the state. And so I'm hoping we could take a little field trip over there to kind of bring to the to my to my child bring that learning alive of everything that she had learned that year so that's the one thing that we're going to kind of be sticking to fourth grade with the social studies is it going to be something i teach the family together but um we're going to have real fun with it and i'm going to show you what i'm going to use for that um and then everything else is either a family subject or in our morning uh circle time so that i'll show in a separate video so Without further ado, let's get to the curriculum. All right, everybody. So here it is, my fourth grade curriculum, kind of just showing you all of it all together. And then I'm going to put the camera down and actually give you guys a tour of everything. Um, so basically, this is the curriculum that she's going to be using for her core subjects. And um, let's get to it and dive right in. All right, everybody. So I wanna start with logic because that is the first thing that my fourth grader will be doing in the morning. And I love it because it works really well to be able to uh, warm up her brain before she does most of the core of her work. And so I like to go with these three books for logic. And what I do is she does one page every day and I just loop these books together. So Monday she'll do this, Tuesday she'll do this, Wednesday she'll do this. Thursday and so on and so on. Okay, so here we go. The first one is word searches for fourth grade. I absolutely love word searches. I think they are amazing for learning new words for spelling. And I love this series because it starts in first grade and it goes, I believe, up until sixth grade. But basically, it is word searches that include words that are of their level. And um, they are able to see the word. They're able to have to look for it. And when they're looking for it, they've got to find the correct spelling. So I think it's a, a great way for kids to, to really learn more words and learn uh, the spelling of those words. And so she's going to do that. And then I have this one, which is puzzle, puzzles and games that make kids think. And I used this last year also for third grade. And what I love is that it's just, just all different types of puzzles 
you know, t kind of brain teasers, different things that help them to just kind of, it's logic, it's logic stuff and critical thinking and all that kinds of stuff. And so it gets harder as you go on in the book. Um, and let me just show you guys a table of contents so you could kind of get an idea of what it shows. So it talks about that it has picture puzzles, word puzzles, and then it kind of talks about all the different types of puzzles it has. It includes um, number puzzles and logic puzzles as well. So all kinds of different puzzles that they do to help them with um, critical thinking and logic. Then I use um, what we call math mathematical reasoning. Now this is great because it has just math presented in a different way, in a way that helps them to use like deductive reasoning and all different types of reasoning skills um, when it comes to math. So it, I love the way that it presents it because it presents it very differently than a regular math textbook. So it kind of gives it that different approach for them to be able to look at math from a different angle. And what I love about this, and I'm gonna show you the table of contents if you wanna take a screenshot of it. Um, but basically it goes through um, all of the standards that it will be covering um, in it. And it talks about, you know, it, it goes through numbers and operations, algebra, geometry, measurement, data analysis, and probability. And so it goes through all of those skills and it tells you page by page what skill it is testing. And I really absolutely love this. I, I also have this for my younger daughter. I started with her in preschool and I really believe that it has helped her so much with math and learning different math skills um, because it is all about use, using those reasoning skills to be able to figure out math concepts. And I love that. So for, for, for language arts, I have my language arts is obviously, as you guys know, separated into different areas. The first one is vocabulary. And so I have the 240 vocabulary words kids need to know. Absolutely love this because it is short three page lessons, three or four page lessons. And so what I do is I have her do like one little section a day or maybe one page a day. Um, and she goes ahead and just, it just tests their uh, vocabulary. It teaches them, you know, they get, I think it's um, 10 words every week and they are just tested on those words in different ways, you know, homophones and um, eponyms and homographs and words from other languages. I just think it's really cool in the way that it kind of breaks down. And what I love about this is it's very independent. You really don't have to do any teaching for it. You just let them do the lesson, go over the answers with them at some point. Then I found, this is a new one that I have never used before, but I saw it on uh, another YouTuber's channel and it's called Red Hot Root Words, Mastering Vocabulary with Prefixes, Suffixes, and Root Words. A lot of the battle of finding the meanings of words and learning about having an extensive vocabulary is learning the root word. And I love this book because it breaks it up into different roots, okay? And then it goes through those words. Like for example, let's look at lesson one. So if you see lesson one, it says sub, below or under. And so it says other words to study. So these are all the different words that have that prefix in it and it's, it helps children to understand, like when you see the word sub, you know that, sub, that whatever that word is, is at, whatever the base word is, it's going to be something that has to do with below or under. So I really love that. I think this is a great book. I'm going to be interchanging. You know, one week she'll do the vocabulary word one that I just showed you, and another, word sh another week she'll do this. And I think it's going to be really great for vocabulary. And hopefully we can kind of discover together the root words for a lot of things. So this is another great one. Now for handwriting, I'm going to be doing just a Zaner Blosser handwriting book and she'll just do like one page a day, nothing major. And it's all cursive because I feel that she gets a lot of printing practice in all of the other assignments that she does. But, you know, cursive is kind of a dying art form, I think, at this point with computers and everything. But I still really want her to learn it because it's such a beautiful thing to know how to write cursive. And I think the more you practice, the better. So I just chose this Zaner Blosser handwriting level three, and that's what she'll go with for handwriting. Simple as that. For spelling, I'm going to go with my tried and true. I absolutely love 
this program, Spelling UC. I'm a huge fan of it. I feel that this program is just speaks to my heart because I am, like, you, like, like I've said, I'm a lawyer. You wouldn't believe how many professionals that I know that cannot spell, and it just looks terrible, even with autocorrect. Sometimes autocorrect doesn't catch everything, but I love this style of teaching. Why? Because it, what it does is it actually has them learn the spelling rules, because I... No, I'm not a big fan. My child was in private school for a long time. She got the 10 words every week. She got the spelling test on Friday. And then guess what? By Monday, she doesn't even remember what the words she had the Friday before. And it just really didn't teach them the the rules. And my daughter started this program in her first year of homeschool. And I, I have to tell you that her spelling has light years. And I mean light years improved with this program. So what it does is it gives you the spelling rule, rules in a fun way where you're supposed to identify them in the paragraphs and color them using colored pencils. And I love it because they, I mean, I'm telling you, and then it's, it's spread out into five lessons each day she does it. And then on the fourth and the fifth day of the week, I dictate to her without her looking, I dictate to her the paragraph and she writes it. And then we check to see if she's got misspellings or not. And what's great about it, especially for those who kind of like get uh, are perfectionistic, like my daughter, there's two chances to test. So she'll be tested the fourth day or he'll be tested the fourth day and the fifth day. So whatever they got wrong in the in the lesson before in 23D, for example, they're gonna now learn it, they're gonna be tested again. So that really gives them the opportunity to take those things that they got wrong and self-correct them for the next lesson. And also what I love about it is, because I'm a huge history buff, it has passages about history, literature, beautiful, beautiful passages. And they actually learn facts about history through the spelling program, which again, a double whammy. They're learning history, they're learning spelling. It's just, you can't go wrong. And so this also starts in preschool, goes up. Uh, I think there's like level G, I think is the last one. Um, but I absolutely love spelling. You see, I am a huge fan of it. And that's what she's going to be doing for spelling. Now for grammar, I have two things that I use. I use scholastic grammar just because if we ever have a crazy day, I know I can give her one of these pages and she's reviewing grammar. Um, and so this is a great reinforcement. I think it goes along the same order as most grammar curriculums. So pretty much when I, what I found is when I was doing the grammar program, which I'm gonna show you now, and scholastic grammar, it kind of ran simultaneously together as far as the order of how things are taught for, for grammar. So I love this book. Um, it's just short, easy lessons uh, covering all different types of grammar stuff. And uh, absolutely love it. Now her main grammar program is my tried and true first language lessons. Guys, this to me, being a, a English buff, a literature buff, a lawyer buff, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Guys, this to me is a solid language uh, grammar curriculum. It really goes through the rules of grammar in such a wonderful way, very slow paced uh, uh, method. And I love it because it goes through the entire grammar, you know, all of the grammar rules she needs to learn. And... What I love, in addition, is that it is scripted. It is totally scripted. If you can see here, I'll show you a lesson. Instructor, workbook, instructor. What, what is it that you have to say? You know, what, you know, what questions you would ask your child during the lesson? Um, I love that. I love that I can open and go. I never had to do one thing of prep for this, okay? Now I do do testing for her, so I do test her on grammar, um, and I do make those tests myself. I kind of just give her like the, the key concepts and we practice different things, but I love this. And also it is teaching them about a lot of like, it, it includes a lot of great literature in it as well. And this is a first language lessons for the well-trained mind. If you are a classical style of education, this is your wheelhouse. Um, it also comes with a workbook. 
where they follow along the exercises with you as you are reading and it's perforated and uh, I love and also hole punched, which I think that is new from last year. May, may not be, but it's a great thing and I love it. And this is what we're using for grammar. Now for, for phonics, I love to go with plaid phonics. Plaid phonics is amazing. And the reason why is because it's been around for forever. It is a solid phonics program. It has great activities and um, great ways to reinforce the concepts. And I just love it. It's very, very independent also. It's kind of like you could just give them the activities and they... So basically it gives them the rules that they need to learn in the lesson itself. And then they kind of just go with it and learn each of the grammar things. So I love um, phonics and grammar. I love phonics rules. And I think this is a great curriculum. It's very solid. Now it comes, now I love pho plaid phonics. It comes also with a teacher resource guide. Now you don't have to get it if you don't want to get it. You can do fine just getting the student workbook and that's okay. Uh, but I like to have the teacher resource guide because it gives me ideas on how to teach. Also, my younger one is more of a hands-on learner and this is gonna help me with some hands-on activities once she gets to this level. So, Plaid Phonics is great, been around for forever and it's very solid and I think it goes all the way, it goes pretty high up in grades so she can continue to use it. Now, for math, we go with what I love and what I've been using since I started homeschooling, Saxon math. I love Saxon math. Saxon math last year was amazing for me who I am, math is not my strong suit. Why I went to law school, because I don't like math and I don't like uh, to do science and math and science. So not that great at math, but I'm getting better by the day as I teach my own daughter. But I love Saxon because the first three grades, so grade one, two, and three are scripted but because they were written by a gentleman by the last name of Saxon and he wrote the curriculum and it's scripted and it teaches them in such a beautiful slow paced way. It, it just, it's so comprehensive and I absolutely loved it. So I wanted to do it for this year as well. Now Saxon math, when you get into the higher grades, you have some options as to where you want to go with it as far as curriculum. Now the, the program after third grade was not written by Saxon. It was written by somebody else. So it is not going to be scripted. So if you want something that's scripted, this may not work for you, but I think Figured I'm going to go with it and be brave and venture out into the wilderness of math and attempt to teach my daughter without the script. But what it's great about it is there are a lot of resources that come with the curriculum. And so here is kind of what it looks like. First lesson, you know, reviewing edition. And what I'm going to plan on doing is just reading the lesson. So everything is taught out of the one textbook. So she'll have a textbook and practice workbook. And so this is the lesson. It kind of goes through it. So I'm just going to be reading it with her, going through it with her. And she'll have some written practice. And also I, I got the big package, which includes the written practice workbook. So this is gonna be for the extra written practice. It also has a solutions manual, which includes, you know, all of the different, the, the answers, basic, it's like an answer sheet, it's her book. So it has all the, the answers. And then the power up workbook, which is I believe for extra work, extra practice in any of the other areas. And so I really love it. I think it's gonna work well. It also, in my package, came with a testing book, which I really love having the tests because it gives me an idea of where she's struggling in, where does she need extra help in. And so I plan on giving her these tests as well. And then just as a little extra, you can also get their little resource reference charts, which are great for them to be able to have in their binders or folders for them to refer to if they need. And I really love them. They're laminated, as you can see by the shininess. I figured let's pick that up too and have uh, everything else, everything can help. So I'm definitely gonna be going with Saxon. I love it. I will let you guys know how it goes. Now again, just like with all the curriculum that I show, if you want a deeper dive, please let me know. And I will leave it in the comments and I will try and get a video out for you that's more in depth. Right now, I'm just trying to get through fourth grade curriculum so that our video is not three hours long. All right, so the next thing, I have is 
geography and social studies. So because I'm doing a lot of other things, I, and I don't want her to you know, slip through the cracks on, on stuff, I am just going to be doing 180 days geography, 180 days social studies. And the reason why is we are going to be focusing more in depth on Florida social studies because that's what's required by our standards. But I do want her to continue to get more social studies practice and geography practice, especially because last year we didn't really get too much into geography. These workbooks are great because they are short, they are easy, they are very independent in the sense that you could just give it to your child and they do it. And it's, you know, it's just got little easy lessons. They're split up into days. Uh, she's not going to do these every, these every day, probably maybe once or twice a week. I'm not going to be crazy with it. And whatever we don't finish, we will do in the summertime. But it's just really easy lessons and kind of comprehensive. It goes through all of the concepts of social studies. Let's show you guys the table of contents. All right, that doesn't really tell me much, but it's, uh, it's gonna show you here the history, civics, geography, economics, history, and it goes through those four areas. So I, I love that, I think it's great. Also the geography is great too. Now for geography, during our circle time, we're gonna be focusing on the 50 states. I have a great program for, for that teaser. It's like amazing and it's by Jessica from the Waldock Way and I love her and she just came out with a great social studies uh, I'm sorry geography curriculum for the 50 states and I am so excited to use it but just for her to get some additional practice on overall geography I have the 180 days again really easy little lessons she can do right on her own I don't even have to worry about it all right so that is what I'm doing for our core curriculum. Now, also, as you know, for Florida, we have to do Florida social studies. So I found these really cute little books, and these little books have all different types of things about Florida. And they're just little readers, and we have Finding Florida, Exploration and Its Legacy. And look how cute. The illustrations are amazing, and it goes through the history of Florida. So it talks about, I've got the, it's a whole series. I got exploration and its legacy. I got the Seminoles of Florida, culture, customs, and conflict. Again, as you can see, talks about all of the Native American tribes that lived here in Florida. From the mouse to the moon. So it talks about Florida's economy and it goes through the railroads, how Florida became known as a tourist place, as a hot spot, goes through all that kind of stuff. And then it, it lands over here in Disney World, which my daughter saw the Walt Disney and she thought, oh, what, we're gonna be learning about Disney. I said, yeah, not, not all of it is. <laughs> um, this one is Florida's American Indian through history, another great one. And then exploring Florida geography, culture, and climate. And this one teaches more about the climate of Florida, the animals that live here, all of the different ecosystems that are in Florida. And so that's what we're gonna be doing. I also have another curriculum coming, but it's still not here yet. It's, it's also a Florida social studies workbook that we're gonna be using as well. Now, for reading, I am going to be more focused with reading, with her reading things. And so I want my daughter in fourth grade to really focus on the great literature of the old times, the classic literature that we all know and love, that we remember reading when we were children. And this series called Classic Starts is great. I'm planning on having her go through these books and basically this is gonna be her reading time. She does 20 minutes of reading every single day. And so I'm hoping she can probably do one or two a month and She's a very fast reader. And so I got these amazing, this amazing series by Classic Starts. And again, I'm gonna link everything in the description box below. But what I love is I'm gonna have her read this and I'm gonna have her do a lap book kind of thing. She can kind of tell me what happened in the story. She can study the story, you know, and, and also help her with her writing as well. So this I absolutely love. This is by Classic Starts. I got The Time Machine. Anne of Green Gables, Pollyanna, The Adventures of Robin Hood, 
The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, The Secret Garden, Black Beauty, one of my favorites. I also got Little Women as well, but I don't have it here. That's a, another great one that I have. I also, when she's done with those books, I'm going to be showing her this amazing series called The Tuttle Twins. And I am, can do a separate video on these because these are really awesome. They're basically little books uh, that teach them different concepts about the economy, about government, about freedom, and they are amazing books and I absolutely love them. And I will do a separate video on this, but this, this books are really great. It teaches them all different types of just things about our economy and our market and, and how things work in our world, in our country. And I absolutely love these books because it's an adventures of these little twins and they do all these kinds of things. So she's going to be doing that as well. Now for writing, I am going to be switching things up. Last year, I did Writing with Ease, which is a program by Susan Wise Bauer, classical education, well-trained mind type of stuff. But, I, and she did a lot of copy work and all of that was very good to set a good foundation. But now I kind of want her to be able to improve with her writing, with making outlines, with summarizing things in writing, with expressing herself properly in writing. And I have heard from a lot of places that this is like an amazing program. And this is called Structure and Style for Students. It is by IEW, the Institute of Excellence in Writing. Now, I love Andrew Podua, who is the one who started this, who, who created this curriculum. I have heard many interviews of, about him. He's actually going to be at a homeschool convention that I'm going to this summer, so I'm excited to, to see him there. But I have heard amazing things about this program, and so I can't wait to, for my daughter to do it. It is a solid writing program. I don't know much about it because honestly, I have not really gotten in deep with, I, I heard you have to take a class to even teach this thing, which I'm probably not going to take the full class. I'll probably learn along with her. Um, but this is, a, this is a little bit of an overview of what it covers. Note making and outlining, writing from notes, retelling narrative stories, summarizing a reference, so all the writing skills that you need. Now, these are huge, guys, for college, for, for graduate school. Kids, if, the, if kids can get this concept down at this age, imagine what they can do with their writing in the future. Writing from pictures, so watch, looking at a picture and writing. Summarizing multiple references. Inventive writing. And I love it. I think it's a great program. I think it is very solid. It, I think it teaches them what they need to learn in writing. I don't know, guys. You guys leave me in the comment below what you think about, about IEW. I have heard amazing things, and I'm very excited to use it. Now, I haven't gotten into um, what it's all about yet because I am still wrapping up my homeschool year. So I'm not really able to, uh, to look into it yet. And really get an idea. I'll, maybe I'll do another video then. But this is what I'm going to be using for writing. Well, that's it, everybody. That is my curriculum for fourth grade. I hope that this has helped you guys to figure out curriculum if you have a fourth grader as well. Please let me know in the comments if you want to see any of the curriculum much more in depth. I wanted to try to make this as short as I could. But I'm definitely here to help any of you that need additional resources or additional help. Now I will be supplementing a little bit with teacher pay teacher websites, uh, teacher pay teacher curriculum and things as well, just to kind of bring learning alive as well. And I can share that with you in a separate video. I have like so many teacher pay teachers that I follow and I love, and I can do a separate video to tell you guys about that. So let me know if you really want to see that as well. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that this was an amazing opportunity for you to kind of see what I'm using for next year. I think it is a solid curriculum. I think it's something that's really going to help take my daughter's education to the next level. Also follow me on uh, Instagram at Firewife Lawyer Mom 911, where I post daily things about what we're doing in our homeschool and all the fun we're having. And I will see you in my next video. Take care. Bye bye. With every step, you find yourself down a dark road. With nothing left to second guess in tomorrow.